Joe Cook here once again with the Weekend Recap this Monday evening. But first, UConn Quest crowned its champion today, and the cat in the hat from Toke takes the crown. Around 1.30 this afternoon, Hugh Neff crossed the UConn Quest finish line. The Alaska Nanix and Anchorage Seawolves met for their final regular season matchup on Thursday night, and this one had postseason implications. Alaska won it payback from an overtime loss at home, and they had a chance for redemption. I talked to Nick Hens, a former Ice Dog and a Nanak defenseman. He said, hey, it's great to have all the boys back in town, but the Nanaks have to handle business this weekend to get some W's. Up on Silent Hill, the Nanak swim team was anything but in the second day of their meet against Biola University. <laughs> all right, thanks, man. Appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us today. Good luck out there. Don't, don't sweat too much out there, global warming, all right? Okay. The official restart, the 43rd, I did arrive right here in Fairbanks in front of Pike's Landing over Hoselton Road. And I got to tell you, the people out here, they're really coming out and showing out for this historical event. Late game heroics in high school basketball on Thursday night, Reggie Miller style. Remember when Miller scored eight points in eight seconds to bring the Pacers back against the Knicks? West Valley's Daniel Hornbuckle did just that. The Alaska Nanak basketball teams will need to channel their inner Mad Maxes and Furiosas this week. They'll need to turn into road warriors with some fury. Yeah, there you go. David Jones, Alaska Nanak hockey, had a great time. Interior Alaska, and hopefully we got there the next Nanak game, see how these guys really do in between the pipes. That was a really great experience to get on the floor with the world famous Harlem Globetrotters and the Washington Generals. Almost made that four point shot too. I thought it was good leaving my hands. What more can you ask for? Made a layup out there as well. We're going to talk high school football. The season is in full swing, guys. And after these first couple of weeks, and you see the teams, who do you think has had one of the best starts to the season. Coach, as we were saying, you know, 1972 Miami Dolphins, they got to move over. You guys got to see it at the table. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming on again. Congratulations again. The Monroe Catholic Rams, the Greatland State champions this year, 20 and 0. Meet Lodge and Ashmore. The senior West Valley guard is averaging eight points, three rebounds, and three steals per game, and her relentless style of play has helped West Valley to a number one seed in the Mid-Alaska Conference Tournament. While most people hear this at a game, Lajan only hears this. Lajan is deaf. You know, Lajan faces obstacles we can't even imagine every single day, so I really have no excuse and um, it pushes me to be a better player. The team didn't use Lajan's hearing impairment as an excuse and developed a system of hand signals, sign language, and body language to communicate with her. It's brought the team closer. You get to know each other. They get to know me. When you get to know somebody, you feel comfortable. You get to play with someone that can't hear anything, and I think it's really neat that she can come out here and play amazing. It has helped us be a better team, and it's helped me be a better coach, and just that whole part of that's so important in sport, being able to communicate while the game's going on is extremely vital. The team also has Wendy Cogley, who has been Lodgen's interpreter for two years and is an integral part of the communication during games. She knows to look to me, and I've asked her to, if you please could sign it back so I know you've received it, then I can sit down and breathe. One good thing is that Lajan can't hear trash talk. I remember they were trying to yell at me. I looked at them like, okay. According to the Hearing Health Foundation, one out of five Americans are hard of hearing in at least one ear. Lodgen hasn't let her handicap or even her mom stop her from playing basketball. She's the second person in her family to play high school basketball and is one of the top track athletes in the state in the 100 and 400 meters. When you see Lodgen on the track or on the court, she wants people to remember one important thing. I might be hard of hearing, but I don't want people to see me that. I want people to see I'm people too. I, I just want to be the same. Hi everybody, I'm here with goalie Davis Jones of the Alaska Nanak hockey team here at the Patty Ice Arena. He's going to walk me through how to be a goalie today. And Davis, man, what's the number one thing I need to know before I get out there on the ice? No fear. Can't be scared of the puck. <laughs> All right, well, without further ado, we're going to get started. Yeah, there you go. David Jones, Alaska Nana Hockey. Had a great time in Terry, Alaska, and hopefully we got there the next Nana game, see how these guys really do in between the pipes. I tried my best, but not, not very good. <laughs> My sister is someone that you meet and you instantly want to be her friend. She's so funny. She has a really great attitude and personality. She's positive when everything around her is negative. 
Leah Ruby is Junior Libero, Samantha Hesterman's big sister. Leah was diagnosed with brain cancer in August of 2012. The news blindsided Samantha. You don't think it's going to happen to your family. And when it first does, you don't want to accept it. You don't want to believe it. You kind of feel numb almost, and you don't know really what to feel until you start going through it. Samantha was instantly supported by her team. She's missed a number of matches to visit Leah since 2012, but UAF became an extended family. I don't know if I was any help at all, but to be able to be there when her parents weren't there and her sister wasn't there to just be able to you know be a loving person to say I care about you and what do you need and I think it really showed her that for the first time that a team isn't just some you know a group of people that you really rely on to score points it's a family and it's somebody that thousands of miles away you can really count on. While Leah battles cancer in Minson Alberta Hospital Samantha battles on the volleyball court the sisters developed a pregame ritual. Every time after she goes out, comes out of surgery, my family will be in the waiting room and they'll wheel her by and she'll give us thumbs up. And that just lets us know that she's okay and that surgery went well. So then before games recently, she's been sending me pictures of her giving her thumbs up to me and I'll send her a thumbs up back. And it just lets us know that even though what we're going through, we're stronger than ever. Samantha has become a more determined player, realizing she's playing for more than wins. Her team sees her as an inspiration. You see it when she plays on the court. I think it's made her like a stronger athlete and an individual on and off the court. And I think that's so great. You know, when she gets out there, you can see that she's a strong leader. And I think just seeing Sam working her butt off every day and trying so hard and having that strength for her sister and her family, like, really carries over to us. This Thanksgiving, Leah, who was 25 years old and always finding the good in the bad, her story, her fight, is teaching her little sister and the Nanooks about what to be thankful for. If, if I can be a blessing to her, great, but it's really neat when your athlete um, blesses you in a different way. I mean, that's incredible. And one thing that I think it's important to remember is when we're playing, we're not fighting a battle. We're doing what we love. We're playing the game that we love. There's people that are fighting a battle. That's not us. We're doing what we love every day. The 15 competitive events at WIO represent something significant to Native customs and the survival of their ancestors. Vasca really loves this time of year. You get to see your friends every year, no matter what. Everyone all over Alaska comes. And then also it's my one way to enjoy my native culture. I know everything about the games and I can do them, so it's the one way that I can enjoy my culture. <laughs> all right, so now me and Amber, we're gonna try our hand at some events, or maybe I'm gonna try. So <laughs> let's get started. First up was the two foot high kick and it took me two attempts. Oh. Hey, not bad. We did the Canadian style high kick and that only took me two attempts as well. I think I'm getting it. You can start either on the ground or up, but I like to start on the ground. And you just swing yourself up, kick with this foot and land without touching the floor. I like how you make it sound so simple. <laughs> the Alaskan style high kick I uh, took some doing, but I got it in two attempts as well. I think I'm going on the wheel, baby. Yes. But then we tried the one-hand reach. And that was one event I just could not do. I'm just going to leave that one to the professionals. Well, I had a great time with Miss Vasca. The Wheel Games extraordinaire. I tried my hand. I didn't quite get all of the events, but I tried my best. You can see the sweat for proof. But I had a great time and good luck in Wheel 2013. Thank you. And that's it for sports tonight. Mike Schultz is next with weather. And as always, we'll catch you next time.